This video provides an overview of game-based learning in education. Let's first start with definition. According to Cobb in his 2012 book titled The Gamification of Learning and Instruction, Game-Based Methods and Strategies for Training and Education, he defined game is a system in which players engage in an abstract challenge defined by rules, interactivity, and feedback that results in quantifiable outcomes, often eliciting an emotional reaction. There are a few types of games, according to Cap, Blair, and Match in 2014. Uh, first, let's look at matching games, such as Hangman or Trivia Game, in which the player must match knowledge he or she possesses with knowledge being requested by the game. Collecting or capturing games such as the Pac-Man or a Monopoly game in which the player's goal is to collect or capture a certain number of objects. Allocating resources games such as SimCity in which the player must balance many variables while growing the city. For example, a player assuming the role of a mayor must balance the need to build infrastructure in terms of basic utilities with a need to have education, health, parks, and leisure. Strategizing games such as chess, in which a player is allocating resources and determining what moves to make in a manner similar to a resource allocation game. Also, there are building games such as Jenga or Minecraft, in which a player tries to create an object out of given materials. Puzzle solving games in which player tries to figure something out based on given clues. A great example is clue. The puzzle is who did it? And the pieces are scattered around the board and the player try to figure out who did what. Exploring games such as scavenger hunts in which the players interact with the environment looking for items of value. Helping games usually involve a player to help another player to solve problems. Role-playing games in which a player assumes a role that he or she usually does not perform in real life to understand an issue or solve a problem from a different perspective. Now let's look at gamification. The gamification is defined by Cobb as using game-based mechanics, aesthetics, and game thinking to engage people, motivate action, promote learning, and solve problems. For example, in some websites, points are used to encourage users to engage in desired behavior such as learning an application, complete a survey, read a website, or buy a product. Here is an example of using gamification for classroom management. Using Class Dojo, you can assign points to students for good classroom behavior or detect points for not acceptable classroom behavior. And there are more examples of gamification. You can use Zondo, Socrative, or Kahoot to engage students in interactive quizzes or polling. These tools can be used to help students achieving quick results through gamification. You may wonder what is the difference between game and gamification. According to the website Badgeville, the difference between game and gamification is presented in this table. Game have defined rules and objectives. Gamification may just be a collection of tasks with points or some form of reward, such as Amazon's book review ratings or mileage you earn from the airline. Games are most costly to build and gamification is easier and cheaper. In, in games, content usually morph to fit the story and scenes of the game. In gamification, usually game like features are added without making too many changes to the content. In short, gamification is to game as parts is to haul or pieces is to puzzle or slice is to pie 
or steering wheel is to car. Now let's look at serious game. A serious game is an experience designed using game mechanics and game thinking to educate individuals in a specific content domain. There are serious games for leadership, sales technique, and other business topics, as well as many serious games in the realm of healthcare. For example, the game Daffer is Dying is a game. For change about the genocide in Darfur, it helps learners understand the hardship and living condition of refugees in Darfur by assuming different characters to understand better the danger faced by different individuals. The Cars of Life is a free online game to explore economics in contemporary Haiti. Learn how poverty is an Obstacle and how one can advocate to increase access to various resources. One can learn about the challenges of poverty by managing the budget, health, education, and work life of a family of five in rural Haiti. So, what's the difference between gamification and serious games? According to Cobb, a serious Game is an experience designed using game mechanics and game thinking to educate individuals in a specific content domain. A serious game is a way to engage and interact with learners, whereas gamification are often viewed as a trivial use of game for learners to earn points or rewards. However, this is. A way to simplify version of gamification, and it's not really what gamification is about. Actually, if one thinks gamification as adding game mechanics to non-game situation to encourage engagement, that is the very narrow way of looking at gamification. Gamification is defined here as a careful and considered application of game thinking. To solve problems and encouraging learning using all the elements of game that are appropriate, let's look at simulation. Simulation is a realistic, controlled risk environment where learning can practice behaviors and experience the impact of decision. For example, flood scene is. An accessible online policy simulation that helps raise public awareness of issues around flood policy and provide feedback to insurers and policymakers in UK. The benefits of playing the game is to increase public awareness of the issue and motivate citizens to take action to improve the situation. I Civics. Is a web-based education project designed to teach students civics and inspire them to be active participants in U.S. democracy. Founded by Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, iCivics provides students with the tools they need for active participation and democratic action. And in a very famous virtual world called Second Life, one can find NASA's. With a lot of simulation for rocket launching and different activities, this graphic shows that simulation games and immersive learning in virtual world are not mutually exclusive. They are overlapping parts, and it depends on the goals of the instruction and the pedagogical application of the tools. For example, in the virtual world, a teacher can bring a class to Second Life. Well, non virtual world to engage in role play with realistic background or a simulation of a sales pitch with background similar to an office space. Now we have a quick overview of different types of way to engage learners using games, gamification, serious games, and simulation. So why do we use games? According to Cobb, there are a few reasons. First. Is creating interactivity in learning. Research shows that the level of interactivity within a learning environment is what drives learning. The more the learner interact with it with each other, or the content, 
and an instructor, the more likely that learning will occur. The second reason: provide opportunities for deep thought and reflection. In this fast-moving world, reflecting on what has been learned is an important part of learning. Again. Can include post-game debriefing or after-action review, an opportunity to reflect on and analyze the outcomes of a game or simulation. Look at what happened, why it happened, and how it can be done more effectively in the future. Games can overcome disengagement. There will be no dull moments with games. Game can also positively change behavior. Research have shown that a person can be positively influenced through actions taken as an avatar within a virtual space, and by playing for social video games. A study has found that people who have played Daffer is dying, as we mentioned earlier. Show a greater willingness to help the Dufferians people than reading a text covering the same information. Finally, game can provide authentic practice, such as in virtual world or other setting that are similar to the real world. There are four ways to gamify. To gamify grading, for example, instead of using points, we can use Badges or other way to help students achieve their learning goals. Using video game can spice up a boring lesson, and stir up a little competition will help students to become more engaged. Here's a table on how we can use games to align with Bloom's taxonomy. Game can be used to help remembering of games such as Hangman or Flip Quiz or Kahoot to help reviewing the content, or help there are game to help with understanding、um, such as Myst or Clue for students to explore different issues, or game can help and applying doing role play, carrying out or using the procedure through executing or implementing. The process will help people to apply the knowledge to a specific domain, or analyzing using games such as Civilization or Age of Empires, The Sim City, or I Civics will help them to analyze different scenario, determine how parts related to one another and overall structure, and at a higher level, evaluating. Students need to strategize. Constant thinking about how to make them make judgment based on criteria or standards, and at the highest level, creating it will be very desirable to encourage students to build their own games to teach a subject. There are a few websites such as Splodder or Scratch, ah,、uh, or game making websites, and Minecraft is another example of. To using tools to encourage creativities. Now you can pause for a moment to think about how you can use games to address Bloom's taxonomy. Here are the references used in this presentation. Have found in starting your first step in integrating games into your classroom.